Hey, what's up guys, it's Roy here. So today let's talk about the M2 and M2 Pro Mac minis. So I will put some timestamps down below, but ultimately my goal is to go over the pricing, go over how you can build this out and what it's gonna cost, and then who it's gonna be for, and then give a couple of recommendations at the end of maybe something else to buy that's gonna give you maybe equal power. Um, so yeah, let's jump right into it. So when it comes to the price, you're looking at $599, which is an insane value. That's $100 less than the previous model. And if you get the education discount, now you're getting it for $499, which is just mind blowing that Apple is able to give this out for 499 bucks. Now for the base model, what is it that you're getting with this new M2? Obviously you're getting the new M2 processor, but what else? So with that, you're getting an eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, 256 gigs of storage, and eight gigs of unified memory. Now that particular model is probably gonna be worth it for most of the people. It just really boils down to what you're using it for. So if you're just someone that's casually using it, web browsing, doing some Word documents, some PowerPoints, surfing the web, whatever it is that you're doing, this is gonna be completely fine for 90% of the people. And you can even get away with doing some video editing and stuff like that as well. But when you start to build it out a little bit more, obviously it's gonna get a little bit more expensive, but it might be worth it. So with that 256 gigs of storage, that might not be enough for most. Now for me personally, with my Mac Mini M1, I had the 256 gig version and it was completely fine for me. But once again, that depends on your workload. Now you could potentially just go out and buy an external SSD like the Samsung T7, which is fast and affordable, like at around hundred bucks for one terabyte right now on Amazon. And it's gonna be a little bit cheaper than upgrading the $200 it will cost you to just double it to 512 from Apple itself. So it might be worth actually spending just a hundred bucks versus 200 bucks and getting an external SSD that you can use with whatever it is that you wanna use it for, not just the Mac mini. Now the other options to be able to upgrade are your memory options. So with the M2 for this year, now you have the ability to not only upgrade it to 16 gigs of RAM, now you can upgrade it to 24 gigs. Now for most people, eight gigs is gonna be enough I will say that if you're doing a lot of video editing, 4K editing, some um, Photoshop and you know picture editing, I think it would be worth upgrading to 16 gigs because it's only an extra $200. Um, I think it's a little overkill for the 24 gig. Uh, so like I said, if you don't know if you need it and you're contemplating it, you probably don't need 24 gigs. So there's not much else that you can do other than upgrading the storage. Uh, it goes all the way up to two terabytes, but like I said, I already covered it a little bit about just doubling it to 512. In my opinion, I think the M2, the perfect combination is for me personally, upgrading to 16 gigs of RAM. So it's gonna bring your price from 599 to 799. And really that's it in my opinion. If you wanna get an external SSD, now I would suggest, like I said, maybe that Samsung T7, you're spending a hundred bucks. And now instead of just doubling to 512, you have jumped up to an extra terabyte. So now you're at 1,256 gigs of storage versus just 512. But yeah, that's up to you. You can upgrade also the ethernet port if you wanted to. Uh, but once again, I don't know if it's worth it or not. Uh, most people might be just doing Wi-Fi. I know personally for me, I'm not close enough to be able to hook up to an ethernet cable. I'm just doing Wi-Fi in my office. So once again, it's just really up to you and your setup. Now where things start to get a little interesting is with the M2 Pro. Because with the M2 Pro, that jumps up to $1299. And Apple's very strategic with how they do their pricing because it's one of those things where you're like, okay, well, I'm at this, I'm at $999, for example, if he did 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. And then there is Apple dangling that M2 Pro carrot at you saying, well, hey, for an extra 300 bucks, you get blank. And then that's where that will starts to turn in your head and you're thinking, okay, maybe I do need to get that. So once again, 
The M2 is gonna be fine for most people, but once again, if you are a content creator doing video editing, you're doing Photoshop, you're doing different types of picture editing, 3D rendering, stuff like that, then yeah, maybe the M2 Pro is worth it because yeah, it is a much bigger processor, so it's basically double the speeds. It's gonna be cutting render times and export times in half versus what the M2 is gonna be. So all in all, I think it's well worth it. It just really depends on what it is that you are needing to use it for. And with that base 1299 M2 Pro, you're getting a 10 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, 16 core neural engine, 16 gigs of unified memory, and 512 gigs of storage. So right there, once again, you're getting everything that you upgraded the regular M2 to, 222, yeah, that's weird to say. But the point is, is that just for that little bit extra, now you're getting a much faster and better processor. And the other big difference between the M2 Pro and M2 version is with the actual physical Mac Mini, you're getting two extra Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back. So instead of two, you're getting four now. So that's just something to throw out. Uh, unfortunately, one other thing to throw out there is there is no SD card reader. I don't know why uh, Apple decided that this Mac Mini didn't deserve that. It would have been awesome to see an additional port or two on the front of the Mac Mini, very similar to the Mac Studio, for example. Maybe an SD card reader, maybe a USB-C or a Thunderbolt port would have been awesome. But unfortunately, we did not. So you have to use a dock or some sort of dongle if you do wanna upload photos through an SD card on your Mac Mini. I personally did that with my Mac Mini M1, but it's unfortunate with 2023 and this new version that you have to still continue to do that. And when we're talking about the upgrades real quick, I'm looking at my computer here. So for an extra 300 bucks, you can upgrade from 10 core CPU to a 12 core CPU and from 16 core GPU to a 19 core GPU for an extra 300 bucks. Now, personally, I don't know if it's worth spending the extra $300 to get that because with other previous testing with just other Macs in general, uh, I always saw that there was hardly a noticeable difference when you're upgrading the cores and stuff like that. Uh, yes, it is better technically on paper, but in real world type of things, uh, the only time that you started noticing major differences is when they're doing extreme benchmarks and stress tests. Um, and then that's where it shines, but most people are never gonna do that. So once again, I don't know if it's worth that $300, that's up to you. And also with it already having 16 gigs of unified memory, it might not be worth spending the extra $400 to upgrade to 32 gigs. But once again, if you are a creator that's doing 4K, maybe even 8K editing, which I'm not sure if this can tackle 8K editing, but it might be able to, uh, then you should possibly upgrade to 32 gigs for that extra $400. But like I said previously in the video, if you're not sure if you need it, you probably don't need that extra memory. And to be honest with you, once again, in previous videos with like the MacBook Pro uh, and some other Macs, when they did upgrade the memory, it was marginal performance differences between the two. So you might just wanna save your money and spend it elsewhere like a nicer monitor or something like that. And with the storage, since it comes with 512 gigs, that might be enough for you because like I said, by default, I'm gonna go back to maybe just buying a really nice external SSD. But if you don't wanna do that, for an extra $200, you can jump up to at least one terabyte, which is really nice. That might be the sweet spot in my opinion if you're going to upgrade something on this maybe upgrade your uh, storage to that one terabyte because that should be plenty for most. Uh, now you can go up all the way up to eight gigs uh, for an extra $2,400. I highly recommend that you do not do that. I feel like that is complete overkill. I feel like that's a complete waste of money because then you're kind of defeating the purpose of what the Mac mini is all about as far as affordability and giving you the best bang for your buck when it comes to the power that the Mac mini has been able to give. And other than that, once again, upgrading the ethernet if you want to, but once again, that's up to you if you feel the need 
or you feel like it's a necessity for you. I think the Mac Mini is a great starter computer for people that are wanting to dive into the Mac world, but they are wanting to also 4K edit, stuff like that, but they don't wanna sit there and stare at their computer for hours because it's super, super slow with like their PC. I used a really nice gaming laptop for my editing and it sucked. And it was a good computer, but it sucked when it came to edits. I couldn't watch any of my playback while I'm editing in full resolution. I always had to downgrade to like better performance. Uh, so all in all, it was just a nightmare. And with this $599 beast, you can literally 4K edit videos, probably all the way in full res, and probably will never have any stuttering or the beach ball unless you have multiple, multiple, multiple layers on your edits. But then, like I said, if you upgrade to 16 gigs or even go up to the M2 Pro, you're not gonna have any issues at all. And then, like I said, also throwing a curveball. So the curveball is, is there something else other than the Mac minis that you can buy? And the obvious answer is, of course, there's always something better, but dollar for dollar, what can you get? So my suggestion would be this, if you already have a really nice monitor, speakers, all that stuff, keyboard, then maybe the Mac mini is for you because you already have those peripherals and you don't need to go out and buy anything else. But the curveball is maybe buying a last year model MacBook Pro, or not last year, but 2021 uh, MacBook Pro because right now they are throwing out some ridiculous savings. For example, like the 14 inch MacBook Pro M1 Pro, because I personally got one for around $1,300 from a store uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually. Um, so just throwing that out there, because now you're dabbling into that world of what the M2 Pro is. So yes, you're getting the new M2 Pro, but the portability, and having that beautiful screen and just the ability to take it and go where you wanna go. And then when you're at home, then boom, plug it up. And now you got your external monitor and all that. So it just really boils down to what you need. But I personally think, this is just my two cents, that it might not be a bad idea to at least look and see if you can find a really good deal on a MacBook Pro uh, 14 or 16 inch. Uh, or even on the used market. I am always on Facebook, OfferUp, Macari, eBay, you name it, and you are able to find some really, really good deals because for an example, this right here, this is an M1 Max. I just got this a couple of days ago and some guy ended up selling it to me for $17.50. So that right there blows anything out of the water with that Mac mini because of the speed and the performance that I get out of it. And it's just a little bit more than a spec'd out Mac mini M2 Pro, but this is an M1 Max. So just something to think about. So let me know down in the comments, what are your thoughts? Are you, are you liking the Mac mini? Are you liking what they did with it? Are you bummed like me, not getting some extra ports out of it like an SD card reader? Uh, yes, it does have a headphone jack on the back and some USB-A ports, but once again, it would have been nice to have that SD card reader. Uh, but I personally think, guys, it's a no-brainer purchase. If you're looking at getting a Mac Mini, I think the base model is a fantastic idea, especially, once again, if you're wanting to dabble in the Mac world. So hit that like button if you liked the video. If you loved it, please subscribe. Ring that notification bell for up-to-date content. So be safe, God bless. We'll see you on the next one.